So, again, what we're going to co continue with here today, okay, is the idea of factoring. Now, factoring is a big umbrella term, okay, it covers a lot of different things that we do, all right? Um, so yesterday we looked at factoring using greatest common factor. That's kind of like one way that you can factor things, okay? Um, today we're going to look at factoring trinomials, all right? And the purpose of all this is to basically give you guys a bunch of different tools to have so that if I were to eventually, and maybe not in this class, but eventually in other classes, if, we're, if we show you a polynomial, Okay, a polynomial, by the way, right, is something like, you know, um, 7x squared y plus 3x squared minus 100xy, you know, plus 200y. So anyway, that's a polynomial, okay. If I throw something like that at you, the idea is that you would then have these different tools to draw from, okay. You might look at this and see, ah, I can factor this. Well, I see there's a GCF I could factor out, so I'll factor out that GCF. And then once you factor the GCF out, maybe you'll see, ah, and now that I've pull, factored out that GCF, I see that there's like a trinomial I can still like work on. And the idea is to kind of break it down and so that it makes something that's very, you know, um, complicated and messy into something that's more, a little bit more neat, easier to work with. And then be able to solve these kind of things uh, in an equation setting. All right, that's the kind of the goal. So right now we're developing tools. So yesterday we learned one tool and that's applicable for different situations. Today's tool, okay, is going to be useful for factoring. So um, we're going to be using this to factor trinomials of the form x squared plus bx plus c. Okay. So you'll notice this is not as widely useful sh as the greatest common factor. Yesterday, it didn't matter how many terms we had, right? Some of the homework problems, some of the homework problems had two terms, a binomial, and we could factor a GCF out. Some had three, a trinomial, and we still had a GCF we could factor out. Some had four terms, okay, and we could still factor something out. It doesn't matter how many terms the thing has, you can still factor the GCF. For this, though, we're specifically developing a tool for factoring that's only useful for trinomials, okay? But part of the reason that we f focus in on trinomials is because, you know, you get those, like, parabola graphs, right? If we graph stuff like this, we can look at, um, so let me just graph one real quick. I'll make one up, like x squared plus 4x plus 4. Sorry, uh, Ramel, one second. Okay. So you can see when you graph a trinomial, you get something like this called a parabola. You guys talked about parabolas last year, right, in Algebra 1. So... Oh. Okay, what, I already messed up because you guys hate quadratics. Okay, so hopefully we're going to make these oh, a little no, bit more comfortable. No, we're not, no. uh, not going to focus on, like, graphing or anything like that, but that's the relationship, okay? In, like, algebra, your big focus was lines and how they manipulate, right? But now we're going to, like, later in algebra 2, your bigger focus is going to be, like, quadratics and things, okay? Well, no one's going to die, okay? I promise. Um, Ramel, sorry, you had a question. Yeah. So, here's what we're going to look at then, okay? The, there's a couple ways you can do stuff like this. We're going to look at something called the product sum method, okay? Now, when you have a trinomial like this, x squared plus bx plus c, so remember the b and c's, they're just going to be numbers, okay? It's always going to factor to be x in parentheses like that, and then it'll be plus blank plus blank, okay? The work involved in these problems is coming up with two numbers here that then, when you multiply these back out, give you that trinomial, okay? So that's going to be our work. We're trying to figure out what are these two numbers, okay? And we do, one way we can do that is by using something called the product sum method. Because we just saw in the warm-up, right, that these two mystery numbers have to multiply to which, which, to which number over here? The C. And these two mystery numbers not only have to multiply to make C, but they have to add to make what? B. Mm -hmm. the, the number in front of the X there, the B. Okay. 
that's something that you maybe have seen before. I feel like you guys did do this in the past, like what, I, what we're looking at today, but maybe not, and that's okay. There's different ways to do these things, so, okay. So let's start with um, let's start with something here. So for example, let's say that I have we'll kind of just jump right in here. So let's say I have x squared plus six x plus eight. <coughs> okay, and so we want to factor the trinomial. Okay, those are our directions. We should always have some directions there to tell us what to do. So you just want to factor this thing. Okay, if you look at it right now, is there a greatest common factor we could pull out? Is there a greatest common factor, a GCF we could factor out from these three terms? No. Yeah, no. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind, right, is sometimes you could factor a GCF out that'll help you. In this case, there's no GCF, so we're going to proceed on. Right. We know that this thing Listen up here, Jason. Focus up here, bud. Uh, touching. Someone's touching you. All right, well, if you want to move up to the front here. Nah, nah, I think it was just, you know, okay, you felt a ghost. <laughs> the ghost of math students past. Okay. We know this thing has to factor to two binomials. Yes. So if you get the two numbers, does the smallest number have to go in the first? Nope. Or does it nope, doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, one second, EK, let me just finish writing this. I'm sorry. So, we also know we need x's in here, right? Because we need to have an x times an x to give us x squared. Again, the key here is to figure out what numbers are going to go right there. Okay? So, I'll put a little plus there, too, plus there, too. All right? All right, EK, sorry, what's your question? Oh, I was just going to see if that's like... You have an idea what the numbers are? No, I was going to ask. Yes, yes, exactly right. So now again, the, the, the goal here is we want to, we always need, we need these two numbers, remember, to multiply to make this term. Oh, four times two. So multiply to eight, but add to six. I got that because I looked at that. You got it because you looked at Ryan's paper. Okay, so right, so we can come up with some, some ideas here. So for example, yes, so you want to basically start with the 8 here. Think of numbers that multiply to make 8. So in that case, yes, 2 and 4, they multiply to make 8. What other pairs of numbers multiply to make 8? 4 and 2. 4 and 2, that's the same thing, though. Okay, 1 and 8. But those don't add to... Right, but I just want to throw those out there for, other, for you, know, you guys to see here, okay? Um, we could also, like if you wanted to be, say here, we could say like negative 2 and negative 4. Right? Don't they multiply to make 8? Positive 8? 5 and 3. 5 and 3, do they multiply to make 8? Oh, I thought we Yeah, well, normally we start, so that's a good point here. The first thing you want to consider is that they multiply. You want to check out the multiplication problems first, and then you check to see that they add to make 6. Exactly, because there's fewer combinations that multiply to make this number than the combinations that add to make this number. What other, there's one other combination I could put here that I'm missing. Negative 1, negative 8. Exactly right. Okay. Now, you're right. This is kind of overkill because we already had, we, we had our solution up there from the, the get-go, right? Jason already gave it to us here. It's 2 and 4. Jason, how did you know that 2 and 4 was the correct one besides seeing it on Ryan's paper? <laughs> exactly right. These two numbers must also add to that middle term. 2 and 4 add to make 6. And so sure enough, it should be x plus 2 and x plus 4. Good question. So... Let me, let me, let's see here. So, is this okay? Yeah. Yes, it is okay. All we've done there is, again, think about this way. It's multiplication, right? All I did is flip the order. Instead of x plus 2 times x plus 4, I made it x plus 4 times x plus 2. These are still saying the same thing, right? 2 times 3 is still 3 times 2. So, that, they're equivalent as well. Mm -hmm. And that's it. We factored it. Boom. That's the answer. Okay. That's factored. How can you check your work here to see that you got it right? We could multiply them. We could multiply them. So I could actually like do this distributed property here. So x times x, x times 2, 4 times x, 4 times 2. And let me just show you here. x times x is x squared. x times 2, 2x. 4 times x, 4x. 4 times 2, 8. 
2x plus 4x combined together there, x squared plus 6x plus 8, there it is. We got it right. Same thing would happen here if we distributed that one as well. It'd be the same thing. Okay? But this is the work. We've now taken something that was a trinomial and we factored it into two factors here. A binomial times a binomial gave us this trinomial here. Is divided by two or divided by? So let's do another one here. Let's see. Let's do another one here. Let's continue on with this <coughs> idea. All right. Um, let's see here. Let's go with um, all right. X squared plus 10x. Oh, sorry, not 10x. 8x. Sorry. Let me write this one now because it's all messy. X squared plus 8x plus 12. Okay, x squared plus 8x plus 12. Again, we're looking for numbers that first multiply to 12, but then second, they must add to 8. Okay, you always want to multiply to make your last term, add to make it 8. Because when we, when we multiply these back out, right, 2 and 4... They, the 2 and the 4 multiply to give us this number, and then they'll be adding, because it'll be 2x and then 4x, they'll be adding to make that 6. Oh, I read that. Okay? So that's the idea here. All right? So again, though, we know we're going to start out with two binomials, and they both have an x in them. Okay? 6 and 2. So then for some side work here, let's just see. So any, any, any ideas what multiply? 6 and so 6 and 2 multiply to make 12. What else multiplies to make 12? 4 and 3. What? 12 and 1. Okay? And then also don't forget, we could say like negative 6 and negative 2, right? Negative 4 and negative 3. Negative 12 and negative 1. Now you might say, Mr. Widmeyer, that's overkill. The answer is already up there. But I just want to point these out to you. When you're doing your work, you do as many as you need to until you get to what you need. Okay? Which one of these combinations is the one we want? 6 and 2. 6 and 2, and why is that, Kyle? Because 6, and, six plus 2 equals 8, and 6 times 2 equals 12. There it is, exactly right. So we're going to say plus 6 plus 2. Or you could say x plus 2 and x plus 6. But either way, that's what it factors to. There's the answer. Um, will it ever make so good question, yes. We'll, we'll, throw some, some tracks. we'll throw some minuses up here in a second. I want to make sure we got this down, because these are like the easiest, I would say, of them. <coughs> okay. That's the easiest of the two. All right? So questions so far? Questions so far? We're all okay on that? All right. So let's try another one here. Uh, let's see here. Let's go with... Uh, so I'm going to change the variables, make it y squared now, just because. Okay. And let's do... Um, y squared plus 47y plus 90. Okay, y squared plus 47y plus 90. So now the numbers are like kind of big. Easy. But Jason still says easy. Right, and so that's just it folks. Feel free to use your calculator to help you here. You do not have to like tackle these alone, right? And so again, we want to focus on this last number here. Okay, we want numbers that multiply to 90, but add to what? 47. Okay, so multiply to 90, but add to 47. So this is going to make us, believe it or not, this is going to kind of help you guys with your like number sense, your multiplication, your addition, and stuff like that. It'll help you kind of get better at that because it forces you to kind of, you know, think about it in terms of that term. No flex. Yeah. Got the answer. All right, one second, Ramel. Let me, let me get everyone else, but I, I believe you. All right. So let's think of some number pairs that multiply to make 90. What's that? The blood drop already over. It's all right. Yes. I'm going to free day. All right, so folks. Give me some number pairs that multiply to make 90. Uh, Jason? 45 and 2. All right, 45 and 2. That's right. All right. Hey, Cable, what's another one? Uh, 10 and 9. Yeah, 5 and 18. 30 and 3. Um, 
What's that? 15 and 6. Very good. Okay. So again, also we could say, you know, negative 45 and negative 2 and negative 10 and negative 9, all that good stuff. But of course, you know, we don't need to go any further. We're doing overkill here. We already have our answer. Which one of these pairs? 45 and 2. 45 and 2. Okay. And so this then becomes, again, it's going to be two binomials, but now not an X here. What should I write? A Y. Y. A Y there. And it's going to be Y plus 45, Y plus 2. Okay. Yeah, like what you were talking about until I realized. Like, until, like, example. Like, okay. I was confused on the first one, but <laughs> right. what's the second one you got? Yeah, and that's the point. I, you know, I like I you more than one. I better remember it. All right, so I'm going to give you all one to try now, okay? And then we're going to look at a few more. We are not quite done because Ikeva asked a very good question. What if we have subtractions in there? And that's a very good question. We're going to look at that. Okay. Wow, look how neatly you folded that. All those little pages there. All right. Let's take a look at one. Let's try. Do, 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 do. All right, let's go with, um, so try this one. So I'm going to n squared plus 13n plus 36. Okay, n squared plus 13n plus 36. Oh, I'm going to give you two, actually. So try that one, number one, and then number two. Um, I don't know, C squared plus 7C plus 6. Okay? So try those two. N squared plus 13N plus 36. C squared plus 7C plus 6. We will. I want to give you these to try first. Oh. I just want to make sure you got these down. I just want to make sure that this wasn't like this. Was oh, yeah, no. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, there's no minus sign, so. No subtraction. What is this, like, the same thing with the plus and the yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I want you to figure out what multiplies, you know, to make the 36 and add to make that. What multiplies make the 36 and add to make the 7. We're going backwards. You got it, Awesome job. You got it. Very good, sir. Make sure you seize for number two, though. I think you put N's. Um, for the second. Yeah, you got. Well, you have the C's there. Give me C's there. Yes, ma'am. What happened? Okay, so you see how we. You know where these numbers came from. So that's right here. What I wrote. These, so your last term in a trinomial like this, they always factor to like two binomials. If they factor. Um, this eight. Okay, you need to think of pairs of numbers that multiply the eight times the eight. eight. So that's where I was coming over here with these numbers. So yeah, that needs to add a So in this case, I'm using the two numbers that multiply to add a so what I like to do when I'm like a little side work here is just come up with pairs of numbers that multiply the third term. And I look at those number pairs and I'm like, ah, these, this pair as the, you know, the 13, that's my answer. Okay? That's what we're talking about. Alright? So give that a shot. <coughs> Alright, like 30 more seconds here, maybe another minute. See so some people still working. Ryan, you want me to look at it here? All right, Alicia, you have an answer for us for number one? Okay, and so be careful. It's n's, but that's exactly right. n plus 4, n plus 9. Okay, those are your answers there. Yep, n plus 4 and n plus 9. Again, this thing is equal to 
those two things being multiplied together. I should put an equal sign there. It didn't quite fit. Okay, very good, Alicia. All right, let's go to someone who's here. Garrett, how about number two there, Garrett? Did you come up with a pair of numbers? I think it's number two, yeah. Okay, so well, let's do it together here. We need to come up with pairs of numbers that multiply to make six. So give me a pair of numbers that multiply to make six there, Garrett. Three and two. Three and two. Let's see, are three and two going to be our answers? Do they add to make seven? No. Nope. Okay, so what's another pair? Don't miss the obvious one. Six. Yeah, one and six. And sure enough, what do they do? They add together to make that seven. Like, at, we're, we're, and that's why I put that one up here, Garrett, is for students, and I'm not really sure why, but it's a tendency to kind of use these, the, like the kind of smaller numbers that multiply to make it, but don't, always, don't forget the easy one. Sometimes that is, you know, that is, or the obvious one, I'll say. Sometimes that one is the right one. So in this case, yeah, it's C plus six, C plus one. Okay, that's equal to that. All right? Questions on any of that? <coughs> All right, so I want to show you a few more here then. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky and where your calculator is going to really help you. When we start throwing the negatives in, it kind of makes these problems a little bit more challenging just because you don't have to worry about adding positive and negative numbers together, you know, multiplying, and stuff like that. So anyway, <coughs> so let's take a look at a few more here. All right. Oops, sorry. All right, so as an example, it's not new, it's just like some slight variations. So you definitely want to see this, though, because it is a little bit different than what we were just looking at. Okay, so let me pick one out here that I want to do. Okay, let's do. Let's do um, e squared minus seven e plus ten. Okay, this one's a little bit different. We now have some subtraction in here. The principles are still the same. So this 10 here, we need to come up with two numbers that multiply like 10, still the same principle, okay? Multiply to 10, but they should then also add to make what? Negative yeah, negative seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. There should not be. There sh it should be unique, actually. It will work out to be unique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we have to look here. Okay, so let's come up with some numbers here, all right? So, Maddie, what's a pair of numbers that multiply to make 10? Just give me a pair. 5 and 2, perfect. Maddie, is 5 and 2, though, do they add to give us negative 7? They don't, right? Give us positive 7. That's not what we want, all right? Let's try something else. What's another pair of numbers that multiply to make 10 there, Maddie? And don't forget the obvious one. Yeah, 1 and 10, exactly right. But of course, if I add those together, not negative 7. Uh, if you write it past, yeah. Okay. There's still, remember, there's still other number pairs, though. Shh, listen up, folks. Julio, what's another number pair that we could do here to multiply make 10? Yeah, so negative 5, negative 2. These also multiply to make positive 10. Folks, listen up. This is where it gets tricky. Don't, don't tune out now. This is going to be a bad idea. You tune out now. You're going to miss the harder ones, okay? Negative 5 times negative 2 gives us positive 10, and then it adds to make negative 7, okay? So this factors, and again, I'm running out, I run out of space here. It factors to then what? E minus 5, E minus 2. Okay, e minus 5, e minus 2. <coughs> That's fine. Yeah, just on like the class we're going to give you, um, try to, they're going to be different variables just to change it up on you. Yeah. Shh, 
I know that's what's most comfortable, but I want to throw that in there because sometimes other problems will change the variables up on you, and I want you to get confused. Okay, so good question. Shh. So Ramel just asked a good question here, okay, just out of curiosity. He said, what about like E minus 5 and then plus 2? Well, so we got to be careful. Do those multiply to give us a positive 10? It would be negative 10. And do they add to make negative 7? No. So again, I see what you're saying. You want to see how you can manipulate things. And sometimes, Ramel, that will be something we need to do, where we have one positive, one negative. But in this case, it was not. Shh. Okay, so let's actually look at that kind of situation that Ramel was talking about. All right. So let's do uh, p squared plus p minus 2. Okay. p squared plus p minus 2. The same principle still apply. We have to multiply, shh, multiply to negative 2. So we need numbers that multiply to neg make negative 2, but add to make... Ooh, what number is here? One. One, yes. So you could do negative, uh, you do negative, I mean. So yeah, go ahead, Jason. What's a pair of numbers that multiply make negative two? Uh, Shh. Negative, uh, negative, negative two times positive one. Yeah. Mm hmm Now let's see here. Negative two times one gives us negative two. What's negative two plus one? one. It would be negative one. So not quite right. Right, negative 2 plus 1 gives us negative 1. We need to be positive 1. Yes, if we flip it around, like Jason and Kayla just said, 2 and negative 1 gives us negative 2, and we add them together, we get that positive 1 that we want. So check, this is the one we want. Say it one more time. Um, oh, hold on a second. I'll show you here in a second. One second. So again... Uh, it's going to be actually p plus 2 times p minus 1. This is what it is here. And again, remember, the numbers need to both multiply to make negative 2 and add. So while your numbers, did, they did add to make positive 1, they need to multiply to make negative 2 still. So that's why always check the multiplication first, from out, and then see that they add to the correct number. That will help you. So there it is. p plus 2, p minus 1. Okay? Um, on Friday, yes. So we'll have more time with this tomorrow, though, Ramel. So don't, you know, don't fret too much. It'll be, if you're, if you're still having some difficulty, we'll have time with it tomorrow, too. Because it's not easy. This is not easy. Okay? It takes time. I think it's complicated, but it's not hard. Right. It's just, it's a lot to keep in track of in your brain. That's all. It's a lot to keep it's track of. <laughs> it's not geometry. That's true. It is not geometry. All right. We'll do one more here together, and I'll give you guys your assignment. Shh. One more here, and I'll give you guys your assignment. All right, we'll do x squared plus 3x. I'll go back to x's for all you people that like the x's there. Plus or minus 54. Okay, so this will be our last one. I'll give you guys your assignment. <coughs> okay, the same principle still apply. So... Derek, we're trying to find two numbers that multiply to what? 54. 54. <laughs> yes, be careful. Actually, true. We do want it to be negative 54 there. And then add to what, Derek? Mm -hmm. Three. Mm, three is right. Okay. So again, guys, if you want to, use your graphing calculators or use the calculator. You don't even need a graphing calculator. Use the calculator to help you. So we'll take negative 54. And that looks like it's even, so we know it divides by 2. So like 2 and negative 27. All right. Well, let's see here. 2 and negative 27, that's not going to add to make 3. Let's think of something else. I could do negative 54 divided by 3, negative 18. So I got 3 and negative 18. Do they add to make positive 3? Yeah, no. All right, I've got to keep going here. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Negative 54 divided by 9. Ah, it's negative 6. Do not a negative 6 add to make 3? Yeah. yeah, they do. Yeah. So I kind of do it, I do it the same way you're doing it, but I like do it here. Like, I just pretend like it's all positive. Okay. And I 
just my number, it's like 227, positive 6 and 9. Gotcha. And then it's 6 and 9 multiply negative 54, I, you know, mm -hmm. then I mess around because... What's the signs? Right, because if you're trying to, like, do it with the signs, sometimes it can get confusing, like, especially, like, for me, because I think that... But if it looks like it can be three... Yeah, exactly, and that's fine. That's, that's a good strategy to develop. That works. Okay, folks, here we go.